Hello YouTube! Um, I am going to be vlogging a lot more um, because the UK government has just announced on the Ma show that old people and people with long-term conditions are going to have to self-isolate for four months. So I've already been self-isolating for nine days um, and it's taken quite a big hit on my mental health. Um, so. I really miss just talking to people, um, so this is what this channel is going to be. Um, just my way of saying hi world, um, I hope you miss me because I miss you. <laughs> um, yeah, so for the past nine days I have been staying at home, uh, I haven't left the house except to go in the garden uh, to get a bit of fresh air, um, but it's so cold I've not really been out. And yeah, yeah, it's it's certainly been very interesting. Um, I've started gaming, which is something that I never really let myself do, um, because I don't see it as like a productive activity for some reason. Like, I think it's because I'm like too well, I've got this on my list, and I've got this on my list, and the last thing on my list is my mental health, and I never get down to looking after myself. Um, so I'm really mindful of that during this prolonged season. Um, so I'm going to be doing quite a bit, hopefully, to uh, stave off depression. Um, so I thought I'd make this video um, talking about things you could do um, while self-isolating um, because as somebody with chronic illness I am very used to self-isolating because of my health needs. Um, I have a condition called cyclical neutropenia which is essentially um, my own body nukes its own white blood cells and they go down to really low chemotherapy levels. I think the thing is um, people with chronic health conditions are very used to self-isolating um, but it's on their own terms. Um, I certainly know for me I self-isolate quite often when my physical health is awful but I feel like I have to do it um, whereas right now I'm feeling pretty okay and I would be out and about. I'm going to be discussing things you can do if you have never self-isolated before um, in regards to uh, just general activities uh, that you otherwise might not have considered. Number one, have ongoing projects. So this is a brilliant way of keeping yourself busy and also doing something you would never would have done before. So at the minute mum and I are planning lots of different activities that we're going to do. So we're going to sew together, we're going to play games together, we're going to have we're going to have a list of movies that we're going to watch, loads of things like that. Do something with this time that you otherwise wouldn't have done because it's a rare opportunity, although an awful one, to try something. Equally, if you're feeling ill, it's fine to just have a day in your PJs. <laughs> I had one of those the day before last and I really needed it. Just watched daytime TV and that was it. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't have the same expectations on yourself that you would normally. I think that's a huge factor in getting through this. Also, to feel sad. I know that while I was in a children's hospital for six months while I was getting diagnosed um, and I put on this like stoic, I think I only ever cried once after we'd had some news and we were told that news in front of some visitors. I didn't cry then and I saved it until my mum had either gone or um, it was just us alone in my room. It was it was really awful, so you need to bear in mind that this will come back and bite you if you do repress feelings, so let it all out. Keep a diary maybe, or maybe start vlogging, even if you don't upload them. I think it's a really good way to get things off your mind and feel like you've said them to the world. Open your curtains every single day. I know that might sound quite obvious, um, but having defined periods of day and night help hugely with uh, this process. If you are able, have defined periods out of bed. Even if it's just in a bedside chair, this 
is part of a sleep hygiene routine and also it's, it's really good for your mental health. Um, try not to obsess about the outside world, be selfish. Um, this time is about you and keeping yourself well and other people well. I think that's a huge point. Um, if you don't normally have a chronic illness and you're self-isolating because you've got symptoms of the coronavirus, um, I think it's hugely important that it's recognised that you're protecting people like me. It's essential that everyone is responsible and um, we see you and we thank you very much for that. If you have the headspace, read or write or do something else with this time. I say if you've got the headspace because for the first week I have just been like in a bit of a daze on Twitter thinking, oh my god. So if you have the headspace, read. If you don't, I would suggest online magazines, uh, short story collections, uh, lots of different things like that will see you through the day. Another really important point is be as kind to yourself as you would be others in this situation. I think I'm very guilty of this. I'm a very compassionate person when it comes to other people, but with myself, I just kind of I don't treat myself from a distance. Like I don't, I don't take a step back and I'm, I don't go, oh, what would I do if somebody else was in this situation? I just think, well, I don't want to be in this situation, so I'm not going to be. And I kind of like hype myself up so much that it just makes everything worse. Showers, again, if you're able, are the most transformative thing ever. Um, so I have a condition called POTS syndrome, uh, which is, said is essentially a fainting syndrome, which is exacerbated by heat. However, um, once I actually get through the ordeal of showering, it makes me feel very chilled and like productive and I also have some really good ideas in the shower um I I don't know it, it like clears my head and makes me sort out a battle plan establish a routine now I say this is really important this is one that I have taken from uh, when I was in hospital having a routine even if it's just which daytime tv programs you're gonna watch when your meal times are, things like that. It's hugely important. Um, it makes the day go more quickly and it gives you things to look forward to. I would also say use services that loan audiobooks. So local councils have libraries which have online libraries which you can then borrow audiobooks from. There's also things like Audible which I appreciate is very expensive but there's also a company called Listening Books which is for anyone with a chronic condition. You can access a whole array like loads and loads and loads of audiobooks for a year you can borrow up to eight a month i think for 20 quid for the year it is a great way to spend the day finally i would say come off screens an hour before bed this is linking back to sleep hygiene but blue light actually really messes with how you sleep. I think having a sleep routine, a day routine, doing lots of projects, everything that I've kind of mentioned should see you through. There are other things. You can take the time to virtually go around the world's most famous museum. There are loads of groups on Facebook pinging up everywhere. And one thing that I would like to say has been lovely to see has been the amount of support people have been giving each other on social media be this financial or just general support one of my best friends yesterday um popped a card through the door and left a bunch of flowers on the doorstep and i just burst into tears because i just felt so alone i think and also yesterday i um had my first kind of facetime sessions with people and that has hugely helped me hearing other people's voices and seeing them made me feel normal I guess and um, we are social beings and I think it's important to maintain that but in a safe and effective way that is it for today if anyone has any other ideas please do comment down below and subscribe if you are new like this video and thank you very much for watching I shall see you all very very soon